welcome to the News Click. One of the highlights of Prime Minister Modi's visit to France in April earlier this year was the signing of an agreement with a French company for the construction of a nuclear plant in Jaitapur. This self-proclaimed global leader in nuclear energy, Arriva, is now likely to go bankrupt. At the time, the Prime Minister had declared that this is the biggest achievement, even more than make in India, as France has agreed to give us technology for nuclear reactors. So we're do- joined today by Prabir Purkayasta, editor of NewsClick and a member of the Delhi Science Forum, to discuss why India signed this agreement with Ariva and its consequences. Hi, Prabir. Now, Ariva, despite being one of the biggest nuclear companies in the world, has been in a perilous financial situation for a while. Why is this and what does this tell us about the state of and the future of the nuclear industry? Well, one of the reasons that Ariva is in trouble is, of course, that the nuclear industry itself is not doing well in the world. So we'll come to that a little later. Specifically, these were the current reactors that uh, Ariva was selling both to India and to other places are what's called the Generation 3 reactors, the EPR uh, reactor, which is 1,600 megawatts in size. And the two reactors which are under construction, the first two, in fact, one is in Finland and one is in France itself. The Finnish one, which is the first one, was supposed to be commissioned by 2010. In about five years after the the placement of the order, it's now supposed to go on stream by 2018. So it's about nine years behind time. So there's been huge cost overruns as well as time overruns. I think the cost overrun has been to the almost to the tune of three times. And therefore, the financial losses for Ariva, because those were, in some sense, fixed price contracts. So who will take the loss? Who is this to be blamed? There are legal issues that are going. So therefore, the reactor market obviously is not doing well considering the costs uh, that have gone up, the costs that are likely to be incurred for new reactors. So this does not seem to be financially or economically. Nuclear power using EPR 1600 does not seem to be a viable alternative. So that's a larger issue. And Ariva, I think, has had losses of $8 billion in the last four years. And this, its survival is till now has been basically on the uh, supplying nuclear fuel to plants it had built earlier and so on, mm-hmm. maintenance of those plants. So new reactor business is certainly not going to help. In fact, every new reactor it gets an order, it runs into further losses. That's a river problem. As far as India is concerned, we have been, after the de- signing the individual's nuclear deal by the UPA government earlier, Manmohan Singh government, there was this whole argument which was sold that there is a nuclear renaissance, a lot of nuclear power plants are going to come up, nuclear is viable, and with Generation 3, the risks are not there. And this is the really the tune that was sung, for which we are getting French reactors, we are getting Westinghouse reactors in other, other places. So these were all a part of the larger mix, which Modi has continued. And Modi also, it seems, has taken this opportunity to also reach an agreement with France. So it's a huge order again for Ariva. It seems to be a part of the PR exercise of the government of trying to build relations with France and therefore claim that they're going to give this technology to us. And and to me, it doesn't seem likely for two reasons. One is Jaitapur itself financially, huge issues, whether Jaitapur will ever be able to come on stream and whether the cost of Jaitapur justifies a nuclear plant there with Ariva. That is one. Secondly, now that we know that Ariva will be taken over by EDF, EDF is not clear, is going to maintain Ariva's this particular design, considering EPR 1600 megawatt unit doesn't seem to have so we'll, done. We'll come to that issue, but first, um, going back again, so why exactly did India sign this agreement with Ariva in the first place? I mean, you've already pointed out the various cost overruns, uh, the safety concerns, which are also raised with regard to the Ariva plants in Finland and so on, the steel core of the reactor, it seems, wasn't manufactured properly. So given we knew that they were not meeting technical specifications, we knew they were in financial uh, difficulty. Is the technology transfer that has been promised to us by the French really that valuable? Is that why we are signing this agreement? And is that worth going for then? The EPR itself is a big question mark. There are technical reasons why there are problems. The problems have arisen with the existing construction. And as you point out, the basic flaws that have been found in the design, they've been trying to rectify them. So the EPR is an unsuccessful design, if you will. 
plant which is supposed to be completed in five years, if it takes 14 years, then it has to be said there is a technological problem over there. Of course, the larger problem with nuclear has always been the cost and time overrun. So, this is nothing which is qualitatively new, but this is really even in that seems to be a very big problem. So, it is it, to me it is not a technical reason why we went in for the Jaitapur uh, with Arriva. It was more political reason to get France back us on the uh, India US nuclear deal with the nuclear suppliers group. That was one of the reasons. And this time it seems to have been much more based on Modi wanting to declare a success. What do you think will actually now happen on the ground insofar as the Jaitapur plant is concerned? Do you think it makes sense to actually pull the plug on the project now given what we know of Arriva's technology and the likely cost overruns? We have had instances in the past in India, numerous instances where power plants have actually ended up producing power at a far greater cost than initially expected which has then led to problems further down the line. I mean I think Dabhol was a very, very good example of this. So, what do we do now? I mean, from a policy perspective here in India. There is no question. If you take the Jaitapur route with Arriva as the reactors, we are going down the Dabo route, the Enron route, because it is a non viable economic uh, technology. The cost of nuclear power from such a plant, and we have done the calculations, is going to be probably two and a half times to three times the cost from an equivalent plant, which would really put it on par with solar energy today, which means that if you take the risk of a nuclear plant, uncertain technology, the time required to put up a nuclear plant, then you are much better off with a solar plant. If you are going to really, you are willing to spend three times the cost for electricity, then solar is obviously a viable route. So, I think Overall terms, Jaitapur really makes no sense today. It does not make technical sense. It does not make economic sense. Now, the latest edition of the World Nuclear Industry Status Report actually points to many of the facts that you just mentioned. It talks about how, for instance, Japan, which has been reliant on nuclear energy, has not used nuclear power for the first time for a full calendar year in more than 50 years. It talks about how nuclear power plants across the world are being decommissioned or ones which are being built, are being stored, so on and so forth. The entire, the, the share that nuclear has in the global energy market is reducing. So why then is India continuing to pursue this nuclear option despite the fact that we now know it really isn't worthwhile? And as you point out, solar is probably a far better option. Uh, do we have no choice in India given that we do have such massive energy requirements which we cannot meet through traditional fossil fuels? Let's get into the second issue later. The question is technologically is nuclear a barren option? In other words, I would say imported reactors don't make sense. Imported reactors don't make sense because the costs we are seeing for either the Westinghouse reactor or the Arriva reactors are much higher. But we don't know uh, how to build our own. That's not true. We have built 22 nuclear plants, which uh, nuclear units, which are running in India, and bulk of them have been built with our indigenous technology. Only the first six, you could say, were you know two were Westinghouse reactors, Russia. and then we had uh, uh, the, the Kandu reactors, and now we have the Russian uh, Kudan Kulam. We have the Russian reactors. So bulk of our reactors are indigenously built, based on what we imported from uh, initially from Canada as the Kandu reactors, and then we indigenized them and we built them ourselves. We expanded their size. We went to more than 500 megawatt from 235 megawatts and so on. Okay. So we have the ability to build nuclear plants. There have been questions regarding the nuclear plant, the safety mm -hmm. hazards and so on. But I think by and large the Kandu reactor design was a relatively safe design and we have successfully indigenized the technology and the cost of that would be relatively lower. Yeah. Does it still make economic sense? That is something to be discussed. Mm -hmm. But it is certainly lower than for instance the nuclear reactors we are talking of importing yeah. which are really much higher. And they are also relatively untested designs. The, both the Westinghouse reactor and the Arriva reactors are relatively untested design because not a single generation 3 nuclear reactor has yet come on stream. Right. So, we are really going to be guinea pigs in some sense in, in that sense. The question of the nuclear energy itself, is it because we need a lot of energy therefore we have to have all sources of energy? I think it is a spurious argument because very simply the question of interchangeability of technology is always there. So, if you want to build a nuclear plant at that cost, if you can build three other plants, the question of needing all sources does not make, does not arise. It is a choice you make in the basket of energy you have, how much will be hydro, how much will be uh, wind, how much will be coal, how much will be gas and how much will be uh, say solar. So, these are choices you make. 
in that it is very clear that over a period of time the cost of renewables are dropping and the cost of nuclear are not only not dropping but actually going up because as we discover more and more risks associated with nuclear power the cost of protecting against those risks being higher capital cost so that's the nuclear problem nuclear is probably the only technology that i know of where the cost has consistently gone a reason with time. Most technologies, the cost reduces with time. Nuclear is not one of them. As a slightly uh, connected issue, if not directly relevant to this subject, um, we've heard a lot about how the American suppliers of nuclear equipment are unwilling to come to India because of the civil nuclear liability arrangement that we have here. How come we don't see similar opposition to this nuclear regime here in India from companies in France or in Russia? They seem more than eager to do business with India. Arriva clearly. Uh, was is it just because they're desperate? They were desperate, and uh, most of the nuclear industry is desperate. The American industry has had a completely risk-free uh, of regime because of the kind of U.S. laws that existed. So they are unwilling to take any risks whatsoever, and they're really not risks. What it says, the liability law in India very clearly states that if there is an accident, then whoever the reactor operator is will have to pay out the money in any case. He can sue if there is a flaw in the design. Yeah. It's not a directly that we sue the reactor company, but the rea the operating company can sue the reactor company. If they have made a mistake in the if, design. If they can There's, be shown yeah. that they have made a mistake. And secondly, it's capped to whatever the, the operating company has paid, which again, 300 million SDRs is the limit anyway. So it it is not that there is no cap, and therefore a 300 million SDR limit on potential damage is one a fraction of the cost of the reactor sale. That's all the time we have today. Do join us again on NewsClick for another episode.